This is Renee Romeo and today I'm in the process of putting together a cake for a wedding shower. Now this one's going to have fondant on it over the top, but for now I'm starting out with just a simple basic white frosting. The reason why I'm doing that is because I don't have the ability to chill this cake, so it needs to be shortening based frosting. And this is the frosting that you'll find at any local bakery around the block. And it's really good and it's, it's just as good as a buttercream, but it holds up a whole lot better in the heat so that's exactly what I need for my purposes so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've taken a little sketch of the cake that I'm going to make and I keep this as a reference as I'm going along but what I need to do with this is I need to really smooth this out and make it a nice smooth base for the fondant the entire cake isn't getting covered by fondant just one portion so watch me as I go along Now the question is, how do I make a mess of a cake like this nice and smooth? So I've located the front of my cake. I need to know that because I can make this area a little bit thinner because this is the area being covered by fondant. But I take my offset spatula, a large one, and I'm just going to start in the front and I'm going to keep pulling it along the sides as I go. And this is going to take several passes. So if you just, if you have one of these rotating dishes, it's really, really simple. Um, makes it so much easier to get this a nice smooth finish. And I'm back to the front. And so all I'm going to do is just keep going back and forth and twisting and twisting, putting even pressure all the way along the cake to get it to smooth out. Now if you have areas like this that are void, go ahead and grab some extra frosting and put it on the bottom and go over the surface one more time. Now let's start on the top. So that's not finished yet. We're going to go back to that once we get the top fairly smooth. And you can pull into the top from the edge. Okay, so I have this smoothed out as far as I can with my offset spatula. So I'm taking a piece of wax paper and I'm putting my wax paper right onto the surface of the cake, like so. And I have this little tool for fondant, which is a smoothing tool for fondant. And what I'm going to do is just press into that wax paper. Now you're going to need some pressure here, so don't don't be worried about what you're doing to the surface of the cake. You want to smooth this as much as possible. And pull it off. And then you'll go ahead and do the same thing along the top. So at this point, you'll see I'm starting to knock down this top edge. So I'm going to go ahead and put my wax paper on the edge and just at a 45 degree angle, just go ahead and fairly light pressure, just knock that down a little bit so it's not quite a perfect edge. And then you'll see, I'll feather it down both top and bottom and get more of a rounded edge on that top edge. Okay. So here's the front of the cake and you'll see I have everything all smoothed out everywhere except for where the dress is going to go. So that's all set. Now, what I've done is uh, I've got some boxed fondant. Usually I make it, but I bought this in the grocery store of all places. It's getting that popular. And when you pull it out of the bag, you're just going to go ahead and knead it a little bit to try to get it to be a little bit more pliable. And I've ripped off a little section and I have a little roller here and I'm just going to go ahead and roll this out uh, probably like a sixteenth of an inch thick and then I'll go ahead and cut it to the shape that I need for the dress. Now I have this great kit for fondant and it's basically just a plastic cutter and what I'm going to do is I'll take my sketch of my dress and I'll go ahead and just visualize here how this needs to be cut out.
Now again, you have to be careful with the fondant and you have to make sure that you wrap it in plastic wrap because otherwise it dries out fairly quickly. Okay, and now I can work on, so, so this is basically what I've cut out and I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit. So there's my shape. This is going to go on the top of the cake. And again, this is the front. I know that because I left my toothpick in there. And I'll place it directly on top. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, for the skirt is just do the center portion. So I'm doing all of these pieces separately. Uh, it make, it'll make it a lot easier for me in the end. So this center piece, I'm rolling very thin toward the top, and I'm actually going to go in and taper this a little bit because I don't want the waistline to get too big. And it's going to be covered anyway along the side. So what I really need to make sure is that I have enough length. Have it drape right over the edge. And I can go ahead and use my smoother to smooth it in place. Now once it gets to the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'll cut it right off at the edge. So let's go ahead and start the outer edges of the skirt. And so the outer edges of the skirt, I've tapered this slightly along the outside edge. That's fine for now. This piece is going to go on top of this layer. So what I need is a little bit of water here to get this to stick. Now be careful with this because if you get water on your fondant and you don't want people to see it, it's going to turn shiny. Get that to lay in a nice fold. And then I'll go ahead and grab some more water and be careful not to drip. You don't want this turning shiny on you. Okay, so in order to fill in this void, what I need to do is make a giant triangle. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a little crease right down the center. Go ahead and get your water and fix it in place. Okay, so let's take the very last piece. I'll flip it over and I'll get it to line up right at the bottom edge. And this one I'm going to be a little bit more careful about. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little crease in the center so that I can get some nice draping going on here at the bottom. Get the paddle out and smooth it all out. So now you'll see, if you've got these folds, you need to push these down a little bit so you can put some water behind the folds too and press those in place. Just slightly, don't press it down so that it's flat. I'm doing one last piece and I fold it over the edges just to get a little start, head start on this. And I'm just going to lay it over the top here. Now this really makes things look nice and neat and even. I recommend this every single time you're doing anything like this to make it look like it's draped. Cut off the bottom. And your skirt is basically done at this point. And according to the sketch, there are sleeves, so I need to go ahead and do that. And you can just do this freehand because you're going to have flowers going over the top of this. So it'll kind of hide a lot of what you're doing. So there are the sleeves right there. Little back and forth curls. Very organic looking.
So I have one last little sleeve treatment to show you, and it's, it's going to be these little butterfly looking flowers. So there are three of them per sleeve. And I have the number five tip. Now the little lacy things were done with a number two tip. So number five tip. Okay. Now I have a little brush and it's got a round tip on it, a little rounded tip. And so I'm just going to go ahead and pull this into the center. the center. Let's get rid of that. Now I'm not sure what the bride's dress looks like so hopefully she'll love it. So on this sleeve portion, I'm just going to put a little circle in the middle and I'm going to do the same treatment on the sleeve. That really just, it fills it in really nicely. It may, almost makes it look like stained glass. Really pretty. Okay, now to deal with the bouquet. So I have some royal icing mixed up in sage green, which are the colors of the wedding party. And all I'm going to do are just make some long stems. And the stems are going to start here and go straight down. And I can layer them too, which I think would be really cute. So I'm going to use this number five tip with the blush color and royal icing and I'm gonna make little Swiss dots over the top of the blush color. And this is really just kind of to cover up some of these little cake pieces that are showing through and making it look kind of messy. So we're just going to go ahead and take care of that. Beautiful. So did this turn out like my drawing? Pretty much. And is it perfect? No, but it's perfect enough. And that's exactly what I'd like to bring to you are projects that you can do and you can pretty much master. Uh, if I didn't tell anybody, they probably would think it came from a bakery. So this is Renee Romeo, and this is for my future niece, by the way, and I know she's gonna love it. So I'm so glad you watched, and I hope to bring you another great project in the future.